All right, welcome. This is the AP Physics 1 practice multiple choice solutions for the dynamics. This is going to be covering questions 1 to 25. The second video is going to be covering the rest. Number 1, what is true about mass? Here you're going to select two answers. Mass is the amount of matter an object consists of. That is true. This is based on the definition of uh, mass. So we want to just highlight that for that to be correct. Next, a mass is an object's weight. That is false. Mass is not the object's weight. Force of gravity is the object's weight. Next, inertia is the consequence of having mass. That is correct. That is also the definition um, or property of mass. Next, mass changes with the strength of gravity. That is false. The force of gravity, or the weight, changes with the strength of gravity. So what you can do here is that I can cross this out. This is wrong. It would be correct if you write the word force. Okay? Or I could actually type it out. That works much better for you. Okay? Or you could actually say it is the force okay it is the force that changes okay with the strength of gravity and you could also say force oh right the change of the force of gravity okay or its weight you could also say this as the weight okay of the object right Okay, good. So two, what is true about weight? Um, number one, weight is the same everywhere regards of um, gravity. That is false everywhere regardless of gravity. This is wrong because it depends on gravity. B, Weight is a vector, why mass is a scalar, that is correct. That is the def that is one of the properties of weight. Weight is the force acting on a mass in a gravitational field, that is correct. And weight is the same as mass and G represents the force of gravity. So the problem with this one is that weight is not the same as mass. Okay? There are two different things. Weight is the same everywhere regardless of gravity mm -mm, is not the same, right? Because everywhere, because of gravity. All right. So next, let's take a look. Three, the tendency to main velocity is caused by um, <clears throat> force and is stated by Newton's first law. Newton's first law is called the law of um, inertia. Um, but it is not because of the force. It's not because of force, so we can cross that out. Okay. Um, the force is stated in Newton's second law. Correct. Force is stated in the second Newton's law, but it has nothing to do with maintaining velocity. Okay. So that is, is also incorrect. Inertia, as is stated in Newton's second law. Inertia is correct. Inertia is the characteristic that says an object uh, will remain in its current velocity or uh, object's velocity um, tends to not change. But that is stated in Newton's first law, so this one is wrong. Okay. D. Mass and is stated in Newton's first law. It is correct. It is stated in Newton's first law. And mass, a characteristic of mass, is this idea of inertia. So D would be the correct answer there. And again, mass has this property of inertia. And this inertia is the tendency to not change in velocity. So an object at rest, which is velocity equals to zero, will tend to be V equals to zero. And if an object has a velocity of 25 north, it tends to be 25 north. Next, four, a mass tied to a string is moving in a horizontal circle on a frictionless surface. When the mass reaches point P, it is cut. 
What path would the object follow? Here, based on Newton's first law, the object is going to go um, tangential to its path. So the answer here would be B. Okay? It would be B. It would not be, it is not A, because this assumes that it keeps going circular, and it does not go C. C doesn't even make sense. It wouldn't curve for any odd reason. Okay? And it does not stop. It will only stop if a opposite force um, reacts to it and stops it at gravity equals to um, where the force equals to zero and it's at static equilibrium. Okay, so this wouldn't make sense. Stop wouldn't make sense because again, it's going to move because it still has that velocity. And A, it would it does not continue in its circular path because the string breaks. Okay, A is wrong because the string breaks. If the string does not break, it is still A. Five. If you accelerate a car to 25 meters per second in a frictionless airless environment at this speed, you remove your foot from the gas pedal. What does the car do next? Says the car picks up a little bit more speed due to its inertia. This is wrong. This is completely wrong because an object cannot gain speed. Inertia has nothing to do with gain of speed. Um, ne <coughs> The car slows down due to a lack of um, force. Maybe. The car comes to a stop. Mm, this doesn't make sense. The reason why this one doesn't make sense is because there is still a velocity. The fact that the acceleration um, stops, it's still moving. Right? Um, so it's still going 25 meters per second to the right. Um, the car contain, um, continues at 25 meters per second until an unbalanced force acts upon it. Uh, this is correct. Okay. This would be the correct answer. Oops, sorry. Uh, this would be the correct answer. All right. Um, B, the car slows down a little due to its lack of forward, uh, force. Mm, the problem with this is that it says frictionless. All right, and the fact that it says frictionless, uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't slow down. It wouldn't slow down because there's no opposite force slowing it down. Okay. Six. If the force acting on an object while while mass is consistent, then its acceleration is changed by a factor of blank. Hmm. Let's see if I could do it here. If I not, I might have to pull up just paint. Actually, you know what? All these 6 through 10 deals with F equals to MA. So I'm probably going to um, just pull up paint, okay? So we can just see it, all right? So um, let me just start by writing um, F equals to MA so we can just sort of see it, right? Okay, so I have F equals to MA, right? And we're looking at what? It's acceleration, so let's solve for M. You're going to see this as net sometimes, so we can write this as A is equal to Fm. All right, let's throw in some values here so we can already know it. Uh, let's say F, can it could be any number, is 4, M is 2. If we plug that in, A has to be 2, right? So look, 4 equals to 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So we would say that the acceleration, right, equals to the acceleration. So we would say that the acceleration it equals to 2, right? So this is initial, 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 right? Initial force, initial mass, initial acceleration, so forth and so forth, okay? Because what's going to happen is we're going to have a new set of Fs, all right? So this is F initial, M initial. We're going to have an F final, right? And an other M final here, all right? And you're going to see what happens. Okay, so if the force acting on the object um, is doubled. So uh, this is going to be doubled, basically. So uh, this goes from 4 to 8, right? Um, and this while mass is constant, so it stays at 2, 
So if it's two, it stays at two. Remember, I'm picking any values here. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, so F equals to MA. Uh, it's eight it is the new F. The new M is two. A, the new acceleration is four, right? So what would happen? It goes from two to four. So here it would say the acceleration is changed by a factor of two. Okay, it is changed by a factor of two. All right. Let's do the next one. If the mass is doubled while a constant force is being applied, then the acceleration is changed by a factor of, if mass is doubled, so let's do that. Mass is doubled, so it goes from two to four. Did anything happen to the force? And force is constant force, so it stays at a four. Then the acceleration is changed by a factor of, okay. So plug it in, four over four equals to A which is just one so it goes from here to here it changes by one half okay so we would say this is one half good let's see the next one All right, if force doubles, why mass is cut in half? Okay, let's do that. Uh, force is doubled, so four to eight, and the mass is cut in half, so it goes from two to one. Do you see why I selected two here? Because half of two is one. If you selected one, it would be one half, okay? So try to pick some like even numbers when you do this. If the force is doubled, uh, force is doubled and mass, uh, if Oh, wait, eight. If force is doubled and mass is doubled, oops. So this is two and this is also four, okay? Because we doubled both. What happens to the acceleration? Eight over four, it's still the new acceleration. That would be what? Two, nothing changed. So it changed by a scale factor of one, okay? Multiply anything by one, it's just itself. So nothing happened. Okay. Then the next one, the force doubled while the mass is cut in half. So this is doubled. So it goes from four to eight. The new mass is half, so it goes from two to one half. Oh, sorry, two to one. Then uh, plug into the equation, F over M. So it goes from two to eight, which is by a factor of four. 2 times 4 is 8. So, you would say that. If the object, um, if the mass of an object is suddenly quadrupled, ooh, that's interesting. Quadruple, let's see what happens. Okay. So, if the mass of an object is suddenly quadrupled, that's by a factor of 4. So, the mass goes 4. If, wait, if the mass of it quadruples, so it goes from 2 times 4 is 8, okay, and then the object's acceleration is changed by a factor of, huh? What happens to the force? You see how there's no force here, right? You don't know what the force changes. Um, may, if you leave it the same, if we leave the, if we leave the same, if we leave it the same, it would be, uh, let's see, 4 to 4, so it's 4 to 8, which is, what, 1 half? You could say here, you could say that, but uh, if the force remains the same, but we don't know the force, so it also depends on the acting force, okay? So that's the answer there. Let's see, 11, when you jump on the Earth, let's see if I can move this a little bit further. I'm just trying to, so you could see both the paint. No, you don't need to see paint here. All right, so let's see. When you jump on Earth, um, is attracted to you? Uh, when you jump on Earth, what happens? Okay, is attracted, the Earth is attracted to you and moves upwards with equal force but less acceleration? Not quite. 
Okay, it, uh, the Earth is too large and does nothing, moves down with equal force and equal acceleration, or moves downwards with equal force but less acceleration because Earth has more mass. The answer would be D. Okay, all right. It moves down with equal force due to Newton's third law. Right. Okay. So your F up. I could write that. So your F up, that is your jumping, right? It has to be equal, right, due to Newton's third law as the force down. Okay? But the mass of the Earth is so big that its acceleration is small. Okay? So the Earth doesn't really move that much. Okay? 12. 12 is a very interesting question. Okay, so give me a second here. All right, so this question is very interesting. So let me give you a scenario. Imagine you running um, east and the earth is also going east. So let me draw this out visually for you. So here's the force of the earth. Okay, and you are also going to run east. So you're going to add to it. Okay, but here's the interesting part. Okay, when you're running east, you're going with the force of Earth. So, if you are stationary, right, if you're staying still, okay, and you see um, someone go past you, okay, you can see their speed. But if you are going the same speed as the object going, you think that both of you are the same, right? Because these two cancel out, okay? Because your reference frame from here, they're also here. If you're here, they're also here, all right? So here's the thing. When you start running with the Earth, let's say you're running as fast as the Earth, right? If you run as fast as the Earth east, and the Earth is also spinning ease, you see time standing still, okay? Right? Because you're at the same reference frame as the Earth that is spinning. So, so if you slow down a little bit, right? Here's the Earth still pointing that way, and you run a little bit, right, lower than it. The Earth does slow down, okay? So these are wrong. The Earth does slow down. Because you're going, um, your reference frame is with it. Oops, sorry. So it does not speed up. Does not speed up. Okay. The earth. Okay. The earth does slow down because again you're getting closer to its reference frame. So is the day shorter or longer? It's very interesting. You can, because the fact that the earth slows down. Your perception of time actually slows down. So to you, you could say the day is longer, right? So this is the most accurate question, just thinking about it in terms of force. But there's a deeper reason for this when you deal with light and special relativity. Okay, but so here, uh, number 12 is a very um, mind-boggling question um, that just gets you to think, right? Um, so don't be worried if you didn't get it or if you try to look it up and you're like, what is it? It's a very mind-boggling question, okay? But for what it is, the answer is D right now. The Earth slows down because you're getting closer, closer to its reference frame. From your point of view, the day is longer because um, the time is slower because you're closer to that reference frame okay there's a more in-depth answer though all right 13 um starting a vehicle from starting a vehicle moving from rest on a horizontal surface on the moon requires okay the same um forward force uh less forward force less forward force or more forward force okay so uh remember for it to go from Rest to moving, what you need to do is you have to apply a forward force. That means it has to be greater than your force of friction. So that is mu Fn. 
Okay, Fn is defined as mg. So you have to overcome the static friction times mg. The fact that um, on Mars or the moon, g is lower. Therefore, this value is going to be smaller. Therefore, you're going to require less force. So less force because the weight of the moon is smaller because the weight on the moon is smaller yes your weight on the moon is smaller correct okay the g value is smaller on mars okay all right 14. um a object is attracted to earth um, by a 50 newtons gravitational force the object pulls back on earth with a also 50 newtons force this is based on uh, newton's third law if an object pulls with 50 newtons the um uh, the opposite and and force will pull back at the same amount okay please understand that this is a tract so this was like a positive and the object pulls back which is the negative okay so 50 the other one also pulls back at 50 okay now uh, th this is positive this is negative okay the net force would be zero okay the net force would be zero so that is wrong uh, you wouldn't multiply it that would be wrong negligible makes no sense because um it still exerts a force okay um 15 in a tug of war both sides pull rope with a 500 newtons force the tension on the rope is what here is very interesting because we're going to assume that both sides are at a stalemate so that means if you draw the rope here's the rope okay that should be a better rope and they're pulling here there is pulling with 500 newtons and here they're pulling with five also with 500 newtons here's the issue the net would be zero the net would be zero so this is wrong okay but we know that if this if the right side is pulling with 500 newtons the all the opposite side is also pulling with 500 newtons okay newton's third law so it would be d it wouldn't be half it wouldn't make sense the force isn't split between them Okay, it wouldn't be 50 either. Uh, 16. Uh, when you push an object, the reactive force depends on the action force. Okay, so let's just take a look for the explanation here. When you push on an object, okay, so here's your push. Here's your push. If I draw it better, yep, there's my push. All right, so there's my push, okay? Once I push the object, what is the opposite? Uh, it's when you push on an object, the reactant force depends on, there's gonna be an equal and opposite force, okay? It might be different, right? It might, uh, your force and the reactant force, right? Their mass and acceleration might be different, Okay, but your forces are the same. Again, this all depends on Newton's third law of motion. Okay, 17. Okay, uh, which is true for a rocket moving up forward. All right. So, exhaust gas pushing on Earth creates an equal and opposite force upwards. No, not quite. Uh, exhausting gas push up air molecules creating an equal and opposite force mm, not quite exhaust gas pushes back by the rocket are the action force and the rocket moving in the opposite direction is the reactant force yeah that makes perfect sense and because that's newton's third law right there and the force on the exhausting gas is so small it doesn't add too much down force uh, to gravity if they do not the rocket will not have enough force no d wouldn't make sense the force of the exhausted gas is small and doesn't add too much downward force if d was true the object the rocket wouldn't even get up out of the atmosphere so if you look at a rocket this is my rocket here right what it's going to do it's going to shoot things out here right 
Okay, and what's going to happen is it shoots here, so it's going to create a force this way. The fact that it sh shoots a force this way, there's going to be an equal and opposite force. So there's going to be stuff that pushes back this way. Okay, so you could think about this as the rocket. This is the force of the rocket on Earth. Okay, this is the rocket on the Earth. So there's going to be something called the force of the Earth on the rocket causing it to go forth causing it to go up and that is by newton's third law 18 in equilibrium problems which can be determined conclusively an object is at rest <laughs> and the object is at a non constant velocity okay so this is very interesting so let me pull up a picture okay give me a second here all right so here you have two versions of equilibrium first of all is the static equilibrium the static the static equilibrium is like a person stationary okay the motionless person is in a sacred equilibrium the person is at rest so a would be correct but because the person's not accelerating but there's something called dynamic equilibrium that is because an object is moving at a constant velocity it's not accelerating okay um, but it still has a velocity it can still be traveling 60 miles per hour to the right but it's not accelerating no one's pressing on the gas pedal all right this is called a, a dynamic equilibrium because it is moving with constant velocity and all the forces are balanced that is still equilibrium so Keep that in mind when we do this problem, okay? The object is at rest is wrong, okay? Because it's conclusively, you don't know if it's static equilibrium or dynamic equilibrium. Same thing here. This is also wrong, okay? The, there is a net force acting on the object. There's a net force acting on the object? Not quite, because there can be um, um, forces that are, um, that there are forces there that can be off balance. So here, the best one that you have is the sum of the forces of the vector is zero. That is basically the definition of equilibrium, okay? Um, this is both the definition for static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium, that the sum of all the forces here is zero and the sum of all the forces here are zero okay so this would be the only correct answer all right 19 okay so <clears throat> an object at rest it has a 500 newton direction to the right and it moves for 10 seconds and then um then then a negative 5 newton force is going to the left from this time forward both forces act continuously describe the office motion during the first 10 and then after the 10 second force oh <clears throat> this is a very good question this question always appears on the ap physics test all right so here is my little block here let's see if i can draw a block here oh perfect sweet here's the block oh come on Here's my block. Oh, let's make that. Oh, let's make that. Uh, let's make that. Yeah, we could do that. All right, perfect. Sweet. So here's my block. First of all, it is going to go here. Five Newtons. Okay. Five Newtons. All right, then it keeps accelerating because it has this force, so it's, it, it, it accelerates. Then, after five seconds, a negative five force is applied. So after this, here, that's how it looks like afterwards. So let me just get another block. After five seconds, it looks like this. All right, okay. It should be drawn a scale, okay? So here's five Newtons. Oh my gosh, that's bad. Five newtons this way and five negative five newtons that way. So here the F net is equal to zero. Okay? So here this means the object is at uh, something called dynamic equilibrium. So there is still a constant 
I can write it here, right? Yeah. So I can say there is still a so so I could write there is this is the dynamic I do not know if that's the right spelling yet. Um equal equilibrium uh, equilibrium uh, yes where there where there is there is constant velocity okay boom that is correct so what happens accelerates for 10 seconds then it decelerates not quite because it's still there all right, it constant velocity for 10 seconds. Nope, there is no constant velocity because there is a net force that happens the first 10 seconds. Uh, force for 10 seconds, that is correct because again, there's a force of five newtons. So that is correct so far. And then constant velocity, that is correct. Okay. All right, accelerate 10 seconds because of the five Newton force, then constant velocity because uh, there is a net force of zero the last, um, couple of seconds uh, where there's constant velocity good 20 when an object is thrown upwards in the absence of air resistance at and it when it reaches the top of the trajectory it stops instantaneously at that point the net force of the object is please understand that it's right here trajectory it stops instantaneously and if we know that from calc that is when the object is at zero that is also that justifies you setting it equals to zero okay it stops it mm, it's instantaneously right um to the left of it it's adding it's subtracting to the right of it it's um adding right but at that moment it's zero okay that's why it uses the word instantaneously okay um 21 space shuttle increases its acceleration every second during takeoff even though its engine generates the same amount of force so it says why so what is happening so here it says the f Going down is the like on the rocket. Let's say it's like five megatons of newtons, so mega newtons or something, all right? Mega newtons, right? Or giga newtons, whatever, all right? So why does it accelerate? So why is there why is there an acceleration upwards? Okay, so if you want to think about it, there's a in-depth, more dipped answer, right? So remember F net equals to MA, right? So this is like F net. So the forces here, um, what, and they're saying F um, force of gravity is down, right? This, right, is subtracting, okay? Then there is a um, forward thrust that is happening. Okay, that this is going up, this is pushing it down, all right? What is happening? Normally, <laughs> all the A's here, or the, um, all the M's here are the same, right? The masses are all the same, and in this class, and for a lot of classes, the mass is conservative. But the, um, it, it becomes something called a differential equation, because not just the speed is changing, or the acceleration is changing, the mass is also changing, all right? So, the answer would be the acceleration since increase since the engine has burned for nope that's wrong it would be here it loses a um it loses a huge amount of mass at it burns as it burns fuel so it will accelerate up because the force going down um there's less force of gravity right so the the moment that it starts, it pushes down a lot, right? But you know how there's force of gravity pushing it down? But as you burn rocket fuel, your M decreases, right? The mass of the rockets decrease. So the force of gravity holding it down decreases, right? You see the acceleration going up? Okay. 22. Two objects with different mass are dropped from the same height with no air resistance. Um, 
So uh, we would say the force of gravity is the same for objects moving vertically when air resistance is negligible. The force of gravity is the same for all. Force of gravity is the same. That is not true. This is only if they have same mass. But here it says it has what? Here it says that it has a uh, different mass. So this one would be wrong. This would be wrong because they have different masses. So their force of gravities are different because they have different masses. Um, B is the correct answer, but let's go over C and D, okay? Uh, the same net force acting on both objects creates the same acceleration. They can, the same net force on both objects creates the same acceleration. No, there wouldn't be the same acceleration because, well, Gravity is still 9.8, but the same force acting on both objects wouldn't work because they have different masses. Okay, so uh, the force of weight, sorry, the weight force is different for both ma for both objects due to their difference in mass. D, why the mass differs, the weight for both objects must be the same for this to occur. This is so wrong. This is so wrong. The weight of both objects must be the same. No, gravity is always 9.8 on Earth. Therefore, the different masses will experience different weight. Okay? So the only answer correct is this one. Let me explain. The more, um, the more massive object um, has more inertia and requires proportionally more force to accelerate at the same rate. Yes, this is also uh, the new way of looking at the um, force equation, right? So A acceleration is defined as your summation of all your forces divided by your mass. Okay, directly proportion. Okay. Uh, 23. A 10 kilogram initially at rest moves at a distance x when a force F is applied at a time t. How far will the object move with 2F? Alright, so wait, is this 23? No, no, yeah, no, sorry. Let's look at 23 first. A 10 kilogram mass is accelerated upward by a rope at 2 meters per second. What is the tension of that rope? Okay. So, hmm. interesting. Here's the object. I'm just going to put a little dot here. Uh, the mass is 10 kilograms. Uh, the rope is going upwards. So there is an acceleration by the system at 2. Oh, okay, yeah. So just set up Newton's third law, um, Newton's second law. So uh, tension. So what is going down is the force of gravity or weight, and what is going up because there is a rope, right? Is force tension. So we know that the summation of all the forces. So summation of all the forces is equal to m a. Our two forces here is force of uh, tension, which is going up, Ft minus force of gravity is equal to ma. Force tension, that's what we're trying to solve for. So we're going to add Fg to both sides. Okay, here, let me zoom this in. So force of tension is going to be equal to uh, if I add mg to both sides, so ma plus um, fg, which can be simplified to ma plus force of gravity is just, I think, um, mass times g. Yeah. Okay, so we know that the acceleration is 2. We know the mass is 10. Oh, that's easy. So the mass of the object is 10. The acceleration was 2, right? That's the system. The mass of the object is 10. And gravity, 9.8, or we could just say it's 10. So this becomes 20. This becomes 10 times 10 is 100. So force tension is equal to 20 plus 100, which is 120. Okay, so the answer would be 120. Yeah, so 24. Okay, 
24. An object initially at rest moves a distant x when a uh, force f is applied. How far will the object move if a force 2f is applied? Okay. So, there's a more in-depth answer here. So, give me a second while I pull up um, an equation for you, okay? Alright. So, there might be an easier way of doing this, but, like, conceptually, but I just want to think about it using one of the kinematics equations. These are all the equations that you are given in terms of, like, an object moving um, <clears throat> on the physics test. This is in your formula sheet. Um, we're looking for distance, uh, so... Alright, we're looking for the x. So, what you can do is you can take this one out. And this one out because this is a change of x. Okay, and you could take a look at this. Okay, there's a lot of things we can cancel out here. <laughs> All right, so um, initially, it's where does it start? We could say it starts at zero. Initial velocity times time is zero. Okay, and we could say that the time applied is t. So we could say this is one. Okay, so this just becomes one. All you're left with is a one half a. Okay. Now, you're wondering what happens to the acceleration if we double it, right? Because if you double the force, you double the acceleration. If mass stays the same, if mass stays the same, right? Check it out, okay? If you double the force, right? Here's F equals to MA, right? You double the force to F, right? We have to be what? 2 MA, but mass is the same, right? If mass is the same, they cancel out cancels out okay if mass is the same conservative mass right if I double the force I double the acceleration okay good that makes sense all right so what happens all right because look at the acceleration a how do I solve for it right I multiply it by 2 multiply this by 2 2x two would be equal to a all right so the answer is C. If you double the force, mass is the same. You double the um, direction that it moves. Okay, assume, assuming frictionless surface that the object is being applied on and all the energy is being transferred. Okay. 25, this is the last one. Uh, if an object hangs in a staggered equilibrium from rope, which is true about every possible case. I got to pull up a picture for this one. Okay, so hang on. All right, so here it says an object is hanging in a cycle equilibrium from two ropes. Here it is, okay? Which object is true? Um, each rope supports the object's weight. Um, each rope supports the object's weight. Not quite. Yeah, it is true. The rope, the rope does support the object's weight um, because there is a force going down, right? That's the weight. But the tension is actually what is supporting it. Okay, the tension from the left one, which is tension one, and the, there's another tension to the other rope, which is tension two. Okay, and those together will balance out this object's weight, okay, because it's in static equilibrium. So T1 plus T2 um, is equal to mg, or you could say T1 plus T2 minus mg equals to zero. So the tension in both ropes add up to the object's total weight. That is true. Okay, the tension in the ropes adds up um, to the object's total weight. The vertical components of each rope's tension supports half of the object's weight, or the vertical components of the tension add up together to equals the object's weight. So here, what this is the problem. They think it's mostly the vertical part. So this is how it looks like. So the force, the tension here on the left one, there is both an x and a y component. So this tension is broken up into a cosine part and a cosine part and a um, sine part, both an x and a y part. Likewise for tension two, there's both a cosine part and a sine part, a horizontal and a vertical part. But together, Okay, together through with all this math, okay, together, 
Um, this tension is a tension is a sum of both the uh, horizontal and vertical part. So this wouldn't make sense. The vertical component of the tension added together, that is wrong. It's both the vertical and horizontal, right? The vertical component of each rope is the tension supported by half. Half? Mm, half is, <coughs> half might be true if the object was at 45. If this was 45 and this was 45, right? They balance out. But here, the fact that it's, one way, uh, it wouldn't be that way, okay? So the answer here would be the tension in the ropes added up. The tension in two ropes will add together to the object's total weight. That is Newton's second law, okay? So there you go. Those are all your solutions for, for one through five.